Well, hello again and welcome again to another episode of Down to Earth, but Heavenly Minded. And I'm your host, Herb Risch, and you're listening to Internet Radio. And as we continue on today in our study in the book of Genesis, we're going to use a magnifying glass today. And we're going to take that magnifying glass and we're going to look in right at uh, verse 2 of chapter 1. So I would like to return to the phrase, And the Spirit of God moved upon the face of the waters. We briefly looked at it in our last session. In order to follow through with our subject and chronologically, we must begin here. The Spirit of God moved. And I want you to really think about that. This is where hope begins to dawn for a ruined universe. The first movement of the recovery of the earth was divine. This was the prime necessity. How could the earth uh, resurrect itself? How could darkness transform itself into light? Well, if, when we look at the creation of man, we're going to see where God breathed into the nostrils of man, and he became a living being, a living soul. It's God that gives life. The ruined creation was helpless. If there was to be restoration, divine power must uh, intervene. The Spirit of God must move. Now we see that in everything. What was true in the physical realm is also true in the spiritual realm. The first movement in the uh, reclaiming or salvation of the soul is the activities of the Holy Spirit. Not walking into the front, join a church, being baptized, taking communion, praying, or working, or weeping. None of this will bring new life into a man. Man is lost, ruined, and helpless. He has no power to regenerate himself. Salvation must come from God. And the Spirit moved. You know, the Red Sea uh, is salvation of the Lord. Before I apply this uh, present condition, let us go a step further in the creation process. Now in verse 3, And God said, Let there be light, and there was light. The phrase, And God said, is mentioned ten times in this chapter, or in our chapter. First, it was, the activity of the Spirit. Now it is the spoken word. Mention them quickly. Well, what do we have here? We have the Spirit and we have the Word. Oh, two parts of the Trinity so far. God could have fashioned and refurnished them uh, refurnish the earth without speaking at all. He could have done it without it. But if you remember what is said in John 1.1, 1, 1, in the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. Light was produced by the Word of God. In the work of the new creation, the activities of the Spirit and the ministry of the sword of God are inseparably joined. Now let us see how this actually works in the salvation of man's soul. How can a person be born again? 
you know, I'm very uh, prone to this scripture in John 3. And it's the story of Nicodemus, who was religious and moral. And the Lord said to him, you must be born again. So if you think you're a religious and moral person, you must be born again. Jesus answered this in John 3, 5. Verily, verily, or truly, truly, I say to you, except a man be born of water and of spirit, he cannot see or enter the kingdom of God. The water here is a well-known symbol of the word of God. But I've seen it as a different thing as well. They're both true. It refers to the word of God, but also, if you think about it, it gives an example of being born of the, uh, born of spirit and of flesh and born of spirit and of water. Well, when you're born fleshly, your mother's water breaks and you come forth. But also, it says that this water has no reference to water baptism at all. It has nothing at all to do with water baptism. And we just looked at John 3, 5 where the Lord said that truly, truly, I say to you, except a man is born of water and of spirit, he cannot see the kingdom of God. In 1 Peter 1, verses 23 to 25, makes it clear that the new birth comes through the word of God. My own conviction, uh, when I was reading John 3 in the story of Nicodemus, I know it was the spirit that moved upon me because I I would have asked the Lord the same question as Nicodemus did. And this is a scripture that brought me to realization that I needed to be born again. And it took a while, but it taught me how to be born again. You know, when you... When you're sitting there reading the scriptures and all of a sudden you would ask the Lord the same questions that another person would ask. I asked the Lord, how can a man be born again when he's old? Can he enter a second time into his mother's womb and be born? Well, my mother was deceased, so how could I be born again? I was thinking just like Nicodemus was. I was thinking of something physical, but the Lord was talking about something spiritual. Read Romans 10, 9, John 5, 24. Being born again, not of corrupt seed, but of incorruptible, by the word of God, which lives and abides forever. The entrance of your word gives light. Psalms 119, verse 130. The entrance of the word into a person's heart gives light as to his lost condition. Romans 3, verses 9, uh, 10 through 19. The entrance of the word gives light on God's love and God's provision for man. John three sixteen. The entrance of the word reveals to us how we must be saved. Romans 10, 9. You know... The conviction of the Philippian jailer in Acts 16. Read it. Oh, sirs, what must I do to be saved? Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ, and thou shalt be saved. Secondly, not only are we saved by the entrance of the word, but we are saved by the indwelling of the Holy Spirit. The Spirit of God comes within us and lives within us, born of water and of spirit. The Holy Spirit was sent by Christ to us by using the word to convict men of sin. 
John 16, verses 7 through 11, to brood over man's soul. Behold the Lamb of God that takes away the sins of the world. Look on the internet and see if you can find Spurgeon's conversion and read it. Wonderful testimony. He was also given power to communicate divine life to the believer. And we're talking about the spirit here in Ephesians 1.13. He also indwells each believer until the day of redemption, Ephesians 4.30. I'm going through Ephesians, uh, my Monday uh, scripture reading, and I see all these things. How can a person be born again when a person's heart is wrong and he hears the word of God, the Holy Spirit applies it to his heart in convicting forces? Well, that's how the Spirit of God works. Acts 24, 25. And he reasons, and etc. Felix trembled. Go your way. Daniel 5, Belch, Belchazer, showing the sinner that he is lost, guilty, and helpless, he then reveals the way of salvation through faith in Christ. You know, the moment light enters the dark soul, and the sinner trusts Christ, the Holy Spirit, seals him with his presence. Think about this. The Spirit of God moved upon the face of the deep. And God said, let there be light. And there was light. And God divided the light from the darkness. You see what happens? The working of the Spirit. In Hebrews 4.12 we read, The Word of God is quickening. Uh -huh life-giving and powerful and sharper than any two-edged sword, piercing even to the divine asunder of the soul and spirit and of the joints and the marrow, and is a discerner of the thoughts and intentions of the heart. This is not a figurative expression, but I believe a statement of literal fact. You know, when you think about man, he's made up of three parts. He's made up of spirit, soul, and body. In 1 Thessalonians 5.23, there can be a distinguishing between the spirit is capable of God's consciousness. The soul is the seed of self-consciousness and the body is the sense of consciousness. When Adam lived in innocence prior to his sin, he was dominated by his spirit. His spirit was the highest part of his complex being. When he sinned, his spirit was degraded to the level of his soul and ceased to function separately. He and those today who are unregenerated are dominated by their souls, which is the seat of lust, passion, and emotions. This is the condition of mankind as described in Isaiah 9-2. The people that walk in darkness have seen a great light, and they that dwell in the land of the shadow of death Upon them the light is shown. In the work of regeneration, the word of God applied by the Spirit is God's pierced even to the divining and sunder of the soul and spirit. A conversion, a converted conversion of the Spirit is recovered, rescued, from the lower levels of which it has fallen and brought back to communion with God. That which was darkness became light again. God separated the light from the darkness.
And that ends our session.